As colder weather moves in, CTA riders are sounding the, the alarm about ghost buses and well, trains. Thomas. They say the CTA has no, not remember, fixed this a is a huge part of what commuters take action is asking for. That's who starts that protest at 8:30. The activist group is saying the delays are wreaking havoc on professional and personal lives Just of riders. In, this is video. Activists this morning are voicing frustration riders. over the surge the of assaults and homicides on CTA trains and buses. She has more on what they're demanding. Good morning, Good morning, Good morning. Ridership on CTA was declining before the pandemic, but then the pandemic hit and the lockdown orders were put in place and ridership just plummeted. The pandemic really fundamentally changed the CTA. What happened was that CTA was running less service and it, it was running less of its scheduled service. And meanwhile, the conditions on the trains started to deteriorate uh, without without a critical mass of people riding the trains, some of the, the uncomfortable and the negative parts of riding the train just became more apparent. Doors closing. Yeah, I take the bus and usually it's really unreliable because if I miss one bus, I usually have to end up waiting 30 minutes or 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes for another bus. In terms of how the CTA has been kind of post COVID, I feel like there's a lot less trains, especially on the blue line. <laughs> I mean, I think for the most part, I feel good about it. Um, sometimes, I mean, the laggy like or delays, that's kind of like frustrating at times. Before I add the train into my database, we check to make sure that it is actually a live train and not just coming out of scheduled service. I'm Brandon McFadden. I started a project in the middle of June to track the reliability of the CTA network. It started with just tracking arrivals and then expanded to tracking all eight lines versus the scheduled departures. Yeah, I will take all of those tables of data and aggregate them into a way that is usable to create reports. We can provide out information like how many trains arrived, whether they were within a scheduled headway or what the anticipated headway of the system is. And it also gives me the ability to determine how many gaps are occurring during different periods of the day. When I first moved, the, the CTA was pretty rough. I wanted to have real numbers to back the complaints that everyone had surrounding the reliability of the network. One of the biggest surprises was the inconsistency. Sometimes rush hour trains would be on time and they would run every three to seven minutes as scheduled. And then there would be days where you would only see a train every 15 or 30 minutes during rush hour. Activists have been very vocal on this issue, and they have really kept um, CTA's challenges at the forefront of everybody's minds. Can you give me a half second? I need to hand out these cards. I think the bus is going to be really late. If you guys ever get ghosted by this thing, you can tell us right here. We track late ghost, late in ghost buses and trains. If you want to take it. How often has it ghosted you? No? You guys are good? All right. Cool. Happy riding. I just saw one pass by. That's why I was concerned. All right. Good for you. Oh, they said that the bus comes on time for them. It happens every now and then. Commuter Take Action was founded about nine months ago um, by a group of people who were extremely frustrated by the CTA's lack of service, their unwillingness to admit it, and their unwillingness to share a plan for fixing it. Raising the issue always helps. Um, in this case, we raise the issue. If you can't express your feelings negatively about a transit system, then the transit system is not going to know that you have negative opinions and they're not going to commit to changing. I hope they don't mind. This should last a nice long time under this awning.
How's the bus? It's late? Hmm? Not convenient. Um, not convenient? Here. Whenever it's late, you can message us. We'll report don't these. Speak English. Oh, no, speak English. Okay. Um, we hate the bus too. <laughs> no, amo, uh, no, no, te amo el bus. The CTA has a leadership problem. It is governed from the top, and it does not have an ear to the ground to hear about what people want. And it also does not have any sense of a long-term cohesive plan for building up transit in Chicago for the populace. It's gotten so bad that you've got organizations like Commuters Take Action, right, literally formed because of the problem. We forced President Dorval to actually come before the city council and testify about things that were being done and what was being improved. So this is pretty much what I was rocking in council. Uh, you guys got to see this and again, how's it oh, going? Yeah, it's, it's really nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that there have been examples of the president not showing up to meetings, not wanting to speak out, not being as transparent as is necessary to improve CTA. We had to push really hard to the point that I had to like dress up in a Halloween costume to bring attention to the fact that our president CTA was not showing up and in effect ghosting the whole city. CTA was facing challenges before the pandemic. Ridership was dropping. What the pandemic did was really accelerate these. CTA has pinned a lot of its service challenges on staffing shortages. And so because of that, CTA has actually adjusted its schedules uh, to try to, to match how many trains they can run and how many buses they can run to the number of bus drivers and train operators that they have. I do think riders have lost faith in CTA. I hear from riders who get frustrated by long wait times and give up and take a ride share to work. I hear from riders who have had some negative experiences um, and will no longer take the trains at night anymore. You guys I usually don't feel as safe riding the CTA at night because uh, there's just a lot of people you don't know who you might run into. Yeah. yeah. Especially as women, I think that's yeah. tough. Right now is the best transportation. Um, they do need some security on the train. Uh, seems to be um, more smoking on the trains, dope and cigarettes, kind of ne more nefarious behavior, I'd say. I do think that, you know, if I was younger, if I was female, it may be a little bit more concerning uh, to be on the train. Um, I don't think the ridership feels, I don't always feel as safe as I used to. Yeah, I know there are like a lot of complaints right now about the CTA like going around. I know it's like a really, it was a really big thing and like the mayors were, the mayor was talking about it like when they were doing elections and like what they were going to do about it. But I don't really have any issues with it. I like it. We have a transportation crisis. We have a transportation crisis because the CTA is in free fall because there are half a million riders a day down. And they can talk about COVID all they want, but it is down because of the perception that the CTA is unsafe. It's, nobody's riding the CTA now because they're afraid. The workers right. are leaving in record numbers because they're afraid oh, to be out of yeah. Violence this year already is up 36% of the CTA. 
So we got to deal with that crisis. Uh, security is so bad, uh, the ridership is down a half a million a month, and WBZ recently did a survey that basically said almost half the CTA riders believe that the CTA is unsafe. So that kind of sums it up. I, put, I feel pretty safe on the CTA. I feel very relaxed on the CTA. I love the CTA. I mean, I sleep on it, yeah, so I, I don't know. I, <laughs> it too. I feel safe long as it's the routes that I'm comfortable with. Like, if it's the red line, I won't get on there to save my life. <laughs> I was getting off the blue line, and um, we got like chased by a homeless guy like a couple blocks. I don't know if that's really a CTA story, but like he chased us on the train and off the train, and then all like through the streets. I was riding on the train, and the guy next to me was legitimately smoking a cigarello, and I was too lazy to stand up, so I just sat next to him while he smoked for my ride. Crime did go up on public transit during the pandemic. The crime rate went up. So even though ridership was down, the odds of becoming a victim of crime did go up. All right, so this will be hard to say. Well, one of the reasons I chose to, to step out and do this is have a hope that this brings into focus or into light some of the real problems that are happening on CTA as opposed to just the window dressing that they give you in the media um, because people really do want to know and, and they want to find out what's going on here. Our, our job since I started here uh, at CTA as a rail operator has changed immensely. It's a lot more violent than it used to be. Um, there's a, a lot more crime on the trains. Uh, the homeless uh, population has exploded. The violence is just nonstop. Uh, you know, you're one operator, you see only what's going on in the head car. Uh, whatever goes on in the uh, additional uh, cars in the concept to your uh, train, who knows what's going on. It's just uh, madness. People have guns on these trains, they, everyone has a knife on these trains. And since they know that no one's really uh, going to control that kind of behavior, it just goes on every single night. You have individuals who can't arrest and have no law enforcement powers, basically walking to stations and generally running away when people are attacked and our people are being molested, when, when seniors are being assaulted. Um, they sit on these trains and um, they won't look at their cell phones, they fall asleep. Sometimes they get out there and they don't do anything at all. You know, I, I hear a lot from riders who uh, see the unarmed guards, um, you know, kind of congregating in train cars or on or on train platforms, um, and and they're an extremely noticeable group of people. One of the things that struck me is when we had a meeting with CTA to discuss like their meeting the moment plan. Um, they talk through their different priorities and treating their staff or, or valuing their workers was not number one. And that was concerning to me. We're just a number. Um, you know, we, we're not respected at all as far as I'm concerned. And so right now CTA is understaffed, they need more people, but people aren't gonna sign up for that job if they don't think it's a job you wanna have. Valuing the people that actually are doing the work in a way that makes them feel like they're valued and incentivize others to sign up for that job, I think is number one. People aren't coming to work, uh, they're calling off. Um, they don't want to come in because of all the pressure that we have out there now. You never know when something's going to occur and you'd like to know that when you got to work that you're going to be able to uh, go home unscathed at the end of the day. We have tourists that are coming into the city and taking the train down into the loop, and the very first thing that they see is either someone smoking on the train or sleeping across four seats on the train. Every single car has homeless people laying in the seats. Um, they're virtually living on these trains. We need to have teams that actually develop relationships to provide solutions for folks that need it. And if you have that constant presence and you got a transportation system that's constantly working, it is safer by proxy of that. Yeah, I, had, I had a bad experience on the, um, the O'Hare coming back from Las Vegas. Um, it was like a lot of homeless people, people that were doing like needle type of drugs. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's been okay. Because, you know, I've, I've never had any problems with it. Uh, I've lived here 33 years, so. And it was kind of scary. You know, they would walk up to my face 
And I was like, it was just, I was totally frightened. I would like never want to repeat that experience again. Because I'm never riding it late at night. And uh, I'm generally paying attention to what's going on around me, so. You no, know, like you definitely have to pay attention to your surroundings. I think that's the biggest thing is just like personal safety. Now I also have to get the two casts in and the dryer shoot. Did you guys see an orange fat cat out there to come in? If I have a, a, a commitment to a show, I know I can't depend on the CTA to make sure that they're on the same schedule that they put out. I know I have to leave at least 30 minutes earlier to make sure I get there kind of on time. People need the ability to get from one end of the city to the other. They need the ability to get to their jobs, to get to their families, to get to all of the places they need to go on public transit. From an economic standpoint, transit, especially like good service in transit, is necessary to get people to their jobs. It has environmental implications. Um, it can help with pedestrian and cyclist safety. Hey, how you doing? Um, so yeah, I'm trying to figure out my set, actually. Two stops. Public transit is kind of at the heart of a lot of the societal challenges that Chicago has faced. Can I rely on them for security? No. Can I rely on them to be informative? No. But I can rely on them on getting me home. We're a world-class city. We need to have a world-class public transportation system so people from everywhere want to come and visit and understand how great of a city Chicago is. Thank you. So, uh, how many of you heard of any good deaf jokes lately? Deaf? No. Deaf? No? Okay. <laughs> I hope it keeps going. I've been seeing headlines about changes, and I don't know what those changes are, but I hope it, you know, keeps going and expands and is more convenient for people who need it even more than I do. Maybe they could get some security on the CTA. Like, I feel like it's like a, I'm not sure, don't quote me on this. Maybe it's like a billion dollar company. Maybe it could be some security on there. Really just the amount of time we're waiting for trains, if that was addressed first, I think everything else will sort of fall in line. Overall, they do a pretty good job, but they need to get the ridership up. And the only way that's ever gonna happen is if all this burglarizing and the horrible stories we hear all the time until that gets cleaned up. But if they get that all cleaned up, I think they'll be have people coming back. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the fact that CTA wasn't operating the way it needs to. Uh, I wouldn't have to wear a costume to bring that sort of attention. I mean, my hope it would be bringing this into focus where, you know, the new mayor and the, whoever it happens to be would clean this up and make it a job that it's, it's uh, a joy to go to work for again, as opposed to what it is now. I think my hope for the future of CTA is that the agency can provide frequent, rapid transit service that works. 